evening, ghosts and ghouls. You're listening to a horrible podcast. What's up, ghosts and ghouls? It's the one, the only, JT Riffer, and I'm here with... Todd of Thunder. And today we're doing our mid-year review of some of the horror movies uh, we've seen. So we're going to give you our top five so far this year. Um, our one disappointment... And the one that has just fucking failed us. Yep. And I've also added a special shout out at the end just to get it out. So I guess I'll shart. Uh, shart. <laughs> I shall shart the shark on the seashore. <laughs> I Sally. shall. I'll start the countdown off. Okay. Coming in at my number five best mid year movie, Knock. At the cabin. Knock at the cabin. Okay. Knock at the cabin. Um, the old M. Night Shyamalan Ding Dong movie that um, has uh, brought him somewhat back to um, relevance as far as making something w- worth watching. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good attempt at... Um... A comeback, I guess, is a comeback. I mean, I don't know if people consider it a comeback. Well, um, it's a comeback in my book because yeah. everything that he's done, probably after, I don't know, I can't even tell you his last good movie because I can't. I mean, they all run together. Signs, uh, signs, maybe. Probably. Um, Village, maybe, maybe. Um, I put sick at number five. Okay. The. Uh, what was it on Peacock? Yes, I believe it was on Peacock. And uh, it's pretty much, uh, it's not pretty much, it's its about the pandemic. Um, its a, It was a straight to streaming release. It was, um, it was, it was good. It was, it's a good um, little thr- uh, slasher um, modern day. It's got good cinematography. It's got good atmosphere, pretty good score. Uh, the actors and actress, actors and actresses in the movie were uh, pretty good. You believe that these people legitimately uh, kind of cared for each other, um, and it was a nice little twist uh, to it. Um, but I'll kick off my number four was "Knock at the Cabin." Um, well, I'll kick off my number four because it's sick. The, see, I was very torn. I was. I didn't know if I wanted to put, like, Knock at the Cabin number five or Sick at number five. I think, well, I think both of the, like you said, both of them are really good movies. I put Sick above simply because I'm more of a slasher fan. But Knock at the Cabin is more of the that kind of end of the world type of deal. And it did keep you on the edge because you had no idea if, the uh, group that uh, Dave Batista was leading was actually insane, or if they were legitimate. Turns out, yeah. you know, spoiler alert, they were legitimate. Yeah, they were so, the uh, four horsemen of the apocalypse. Yeah, but yeah, I put sick at number four, and like you said, it um, it's rare that you can get a movie uh, about a modern day social issue that is not pandering to you or not preaching to you and not leaning one way or the other. It was, um, it was a wonderful movie that took, like I said, something that's happening in real life. But the main core of this movie is about the, 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 the slashing, basically the, the atmosphere was good. It was almost like, one of those, you know, who done it type of deals or reveals. And like I said, when you can take a real life situation and bring light to it and not lean one way or another and still have your core story meaning that you know, these people are getting killed is what your main focus is. I think it was wonderful. I think you've done convinced me to flip my script. <laughs> Well, I mean, I mean, because I was very torn because I think that they're they're both very good movies, but yeah. I'm, I'm kind of like you. I kind of lean towards more slashes. The only reason why I kind of gave it to um, 
knock at the cabin is because I, I was satisfied with how good M. Night Shyamalan did. Yeah. So I, I feel like it's almost like I, you want to give him, him so much. Yeah, you want to give him props for doing something that you actually enjoyed. Right. So, you know, I knock the guy all the time. Um, but, yeah, these two movies, in my opinion, are on the same level. I mean, they could be flip-flopped. But, like I said, the only reason I, I, I chose Sick is because I'm more of a slasher fan. I'm more of a, you know, put a guy in a mask or a girl in a mask or whoever in a mask and give them sharp objects. Yeah, and let them poke each other. Yeah, poke each other. Well, my number three is Megan. Yes. Megan. Mine is number three, too. It was kind of hard putting it at number three, to be honest with you. Yeah, Megan is a uh, surprisingly good movie. It's It had no right to be as good as it is because it's, uh, you know, it's kind of taking that AI frenzy that's, that's going around now. Like, you know, a couple of years ago, it was always talk about, you know, what about if they made AI, artificial intelligent people? You know, when movies like iRobot came out and stuff. And now here in 2023, it seems like it's more serious talk. Like in, It's probably closer than it's ever been. Yeah, like in real life. In real life. So, yeah. And, and it was freaky. You know, like nothing in Megan surprised me. I just, I just hoped and wished that everything that was presented was done right. And that's what they did. Like yeah. I said, it didn't surprise me at all. It just, it's like I expected it to be this way, and it was that way, and they did exactly what I think that they should have done, which yeah. makes it a great movie. Um, Well, like I said, I'm, I'm in the same spot with you. Um, to add to it, the only thing that, I mean, we know that this movie is getting a part two because of how well it did at the box office. Right. My only two criticisms of the movie is that I wanted a little bit more gore, gore, because uh, I like a little gore. I think it could have benefited. Um, not 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 like over the top, you know, sim- simple like a Chucky kill. Like, you know, one of our favorite Chucky kills is, you know, in part two where he fucking gets his uh, the plastic eyeballs like stuck in his head. Right. And you don't really see, like, you see it, like, as it goes down, you don't see it actually go in, and then you see the results of it. I feel like they, they could have did a little bit more with the kills. Right. A little bit more creative with the kills because of how, like, smart she is. Mm-hmm. Um, and the concept of this movie, I hate to tell you people, is Child's Plays 2018. It just took that concept and... I think it was 2019. 2019, excuse yeah. me. Yeah. Um, it took the it's, exact it's, same concept. It actually, it actually seems like the movie was made way, like, years and years yeah. ago at this point. Yeah. But it was only 2019. But yeah. I get exactly what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, it's the exact same plot. Um, little twist, gender swap, and then... But Megan, hats off to her, did it way better. Yeah, and, you know, speaking of that... The 2019 Child's Play, which we actually really like that movie. We're not shitting on it. No. We're just, and, and it was more gory. It was. Like you're talking about. Uh, however, um, I don't know. Megan just added some style to it. And, you know, the only reason why I don't criticize it is because, like you said, we're getting a part two, and I'm thinking... Sequel, bigger body count, more blood, more of this, more of that. Mm, I don't know. They might stick with the PG because of how well it did. Well, I think you can stick with PG and have a little bit, you know, you don't have to go over the top with the kills, but g- give me a little bit more kills, you know. Um, any Anytime a sequel comes, the killer or whatever is supposed to be smarter, which means there's yeah. supposed to be more, maybe she's mad you know, yeah. that she didn't get to do. I don't know. They just need to follow. It's fo- just so many creative ways because of, like, Well, they how- need to follow the horror rules, you know, which is sequel, bigger, bigger, bigger. Every sequel, Friday 13th Part 2, Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Halloween 2, 
bigger, more kills. Some yeah. people don't like that. Some people, oh, it deludes the franchise. No, no, no. We like horror movies, people. We like to see people get killed. We love stories. Don't get us wrong. But we also like mindless violence. Well, the thing with Megan is we know how smart she is and what she's capable of. Mm-hmm. In part two, I want to, sh- I want them to show what she's capable of. Right. How, like, evil and mon- uh, maniacal and fucking devious and deception and, like, how creative they can be with right. it. Like, the potential is fucking endless with this movie. Almost like, you know, first time I was just playing with you, bitch. Yeah, exactly. But it's now like, I'm sir. Now I'm sirs. Well, coming in at number two on my list is Renfield. Same. Uh, Renfield was fucking awesome. Uh, Nicholas Cage proved once again that he can do whatever he wants. He can do big budget horror films. He can do straight to DVD, straight to streaming service, whatever you want to call it. He can do whatever he wants to do. He does what he wants to do. And, you know, some people say, oh, well, he only does these movies to make a buck. I don't think so. I think he's got plenty of goddamn money. He just does them because he wants to continuously work. And I, mean, and I don't think there's anything wrong with it. The, now, there's actors out there that take these types of shit because that's all they can get because they can't be cast in theatrical movies anymore. Nicholas yeah. Cage, that's not the case with Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage, I believe, can play in any movie that he wants to. He can do a fucking rom-com. Easy. If yeah. he wants to. Or he can fucking be Dracula. He done such an amazing job in this movie. Like me and, and you, he's not the only one, by the way, but no. but we just want to give props because he is one of those people that a lot of mainstream and not even not not even mainstream fans, but a lot of people just shit on him, you know? Because it's fun and it's the popular thing to do. Right. It's like Creed. People not Creed. Yeah, Creed or Nickelback. Yeah. Although, you know, Chad is uh, very douchey. Oh, 100% cocksucker. But the albums are pretty enjoyable to a, to a certain point, so. Yeah, they got some heavy shit. A lot of people don't realize. But anyway, we're not here to talk about music. That's for another episode. Um, Yeah, Renfield was just over the top. Like, I, I had a feeling it was going to be good. But I didn't know it was going to be as good. I didn't know it was going to be as gory as it was. I was very pleasantly surprised with how gory it was. Yeah, it 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 brought the gore. It brought the sense of humor. It brought the darkness. It brought the look of it, the cinema, cinematography, the the score to it. Everything was on point with this. Like this was not just a project that was thrown together and thrown in a. Uh, uh, you know, Nicolas Cage in it, and uh, forgive me, I forgot the other dude's name, but he's he had uh, played in the... Uh, Days of Future Past is Beast. Yeah, the X-Men films where they go back in he's time. He's been in other things, too. Yeah, he's been in other things, but he did a terrific job. And uh, everybody in this film was, was pretty awesome. And, yeah. you know, it was one of those hunches that I think this is going to be good, and then you go to see it, and it actually surpasses your expectations in my opinion yeah like i need a renfield too oh yeah we definitely clamoring yeah. for a sequel to that one yeah well number one i'm pretty sure it's the same as mine well it has to be and that is evil, evil dead, dead rise. rise now i've heard people shit on this movie i've heard people say well it wasn't all that great i totally disagree you can have your opinion all you want to but to me this movie was everything that it should